Adventurous kids explore with education and learning what a wildlife is in the Everglades. I want to explore the Museum of Discovery Science. What plants do butterflies like? I want to know about Key West Adventurous Kids. Learning and fun. Adventurous Kids! Today, I'm going to tell you about drawing. So drawing is kind of like one of the bases of art. If you think of building any skill as like building a building, right? You need a base skill. So if you want to become a great painter, or even like if you're like, oh, I want to make graphic designs on the computer, you still have to sketch out your ideas. Architects use drawing. The greatest artists in history all drew out and sketched out their ideas. Even someone like Benjamin Franklin had a diary where he sketched out his invention ideas. The first person to use what's called phi, or the golden ratio, was Leonardo da Vinci. And what is phi? What is the golden ratio? It's a very complicated mathematic concept that basically says when certain things have a certain ratio apart, they're aesthetically pleasing, which means they look good to the eye. And the human form follows golden ratio and so one of the reasons why the Mona Lisa, which is something that Leonardo da Vinci painted, one of the reasons why it's revered as one of the most perfect pieces of art is because he utilized the golden ratio. And it was one of the most true to form human paintings. So today we're gonna be drawing together, because how do you draw? Like all that information is great, but I see this character that I like and I want to draw them now, right? The best artists study and they practice for many, 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 many years. And what I can do for you is tell you what I've learned taking art classes and uh, sort of my technique for when there's something that I want to draw or paint. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is a reference picture. Some people are really, really good at taking something from their brain and putting it on a piece of paper. And if you're creating something new, that's ideally what you would, would want to do. Uh, but today we're going to be drawing a fun character. We're going to be drawing Spongebob. So I have my reference here on my phone that I'm going to be looking at. And the reason why we need the picture is we want to go, okay, what shapes do I see in Spongebob? And most of you are going to be looking at this going, I see a square. <laughs> and that's because he's square pants, right? So we're going to start by drawing a square, but we don't want our square to be quite perfect. If you look at him, he kind of comes in a little bit at an angle, right? So we're gonna square this out before we put in any details. And then I see kind of like for his arms here, little triangles off to the side, little curvy rectangles for his the bottoms of his shorts, and then we'll place everything else for the rest of his limbs. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right. So I kind of want to go a little bit long here. And remember, I wanted to take it in a little bit. Most people, when they draw, and I did this for a long time too, they choke up on the pencil like this. You actually have a little bit more freedom if you come back on it. I saw that in a video once. It was very helpful. The other thing you'll notice is I'm sketching. I'm kind of going back and forth. I have a couple of lines going on, right? I think I took them in a little too much here, so I'm going to erase. I'm going very lightly. You, you, if you draw and you really press down hard, man, you're committing to those lines. And... Uh, as it has been explained to me, I have commitment issues. So I'm going to draw very lightly out here. There we go. And then we're going to bring it in here at the bottom. So you know he's not like a perfect, perfect square. And the reason for that, and I'm certain the reason for that in the animation, is because in life, things we talked about phi, we talked about the golden ratio. Um, and that's what everything is striving towards, it's striving towards that ratio. But everything misses the mark just a hair. 
you know, sometimes a little bit more, which is when you get things that are like aesthetically maybe unpleasing, but um, taking out his shorts just a little bit. Um, it's those little imperfections, right, that make things uh, more realistic, more animated. So the fact that SpongeBob isn't just this very stiff square, but he's he's dynamic, right? He's got some those curved lines kind of give him a little bit more motion. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a look at where his sleeve comes off his body. It's just over the shorts. So if the shorts are here, if I take my line out a little bit so I can match it, I know the sleeve needs to come just to probably here, right? So I'll start at the bottom and then I'll just slowly work my way up. And what I might do is take a line that I'm gonna erase later. And I'm gonna come across as, it's better if you have a ruler but you can kind of dust it out and then do the same thing on the other side, right? I'm going to put my mark here. I'm going to say I want my sleeve to end here and I'm going to bring it out. Oh, I'm going to go just over my line a little bit. That's okay. That just gives me a frame of reference. It might look like he's shrugging his shoulder a little bit. So when you're sketching it out and you're giving yourself reference, again, I can't stress this enough. Do not press hard on the pencil. That's the other reason why it's good to kind of have your grip be more in the back so that you, you it kind of keeps you from making those harsher lines that'll commit you to that, that spot. So I'm gonna come down here for the little uh, rectangle bits to be his shorts. They're right in between, let's see, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna cut it in half right because right here there will be this uh, belt loop that the tie is going to go over but I only put that in now to be my reference point because I want to look at where this square is and this square they're not squares really the rectangles kind of curvy rectangles so this this rectangle and this rectangle are and I'll come back and I'll curve them out in a second I just want to lock them in and make sure that's where I want to put them. That one's a little bit bigger. That is the beautiful thing about pencils is they have erasers. So you can go back and you can fix your little mistakes. Now I'm going to give them a little bit of the curve that it has. This kind of comes here. Kind of makes it look like the the shorts are kind of moving with him. This curve isn't as dramatic, but it's cuppy here. Cuppy, that's not an official term. That's just my own thing. Okay, so looking at our SpongeBob, right, we've kind of mapped out roughly where everything is. All right, and this is for perspective. Right, um, so now I'm gonna look where, where do I want his arms? I want his arms to come down this way and give him like a little circle for his hands and I just wanna make sure every cartoon character is a little different. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we'll, he'll have a little thing here. So one, two, and I won't lie to you guys, I would never do that. I am not good at drawing hands. Drawing hands, especially realistic hands, um, can be very, very, very tricky. Especially with feet too. Hands and feet are very tricky. Which is why using this method of and I, I used to get these how to draw books and I go, how do they take these shapes and just create these like masterpieces on the next page? Like it doesn't explain how they went from one to the other very well. And so I kind of had to figure out, like, oh, what the artist is, is doing is mapping out and kind of blocking out where things are. The ratios, the ratio of everything, right, of top to bottom to give it uh, uh, life, so to speak. I'm going to map out his little legs here. And 
I'm just get the shoes kind of like a circle here, and then up here, and then it's like another circle. And then a circle here, and it kind of comes off this way for another circle. We have that locked off. Now let's focus on the face. Now one of the things that I like to do for the face is give myself a line straight across. Now he's not in the middle because his eyes are going to be up here. Actually, I might want to lower that a little bit. Again, good thing we made it a very light line. Because once you, you put in all these things and you go back in and you put the details in, that's when you want to press down. That's when you want to make your commitment lines. All right. So look at his eyes. I'm going to be honest with you. If I had something small enough to trace, I would just be tracing perfect circles. We're going to do the best we can. My method for making a circle as perfect as you can with your imperfect human hand, because we're not robots yet, <laughs> is to just keep... I'm going to flip over the page. I'm going to show you, okay? Okay, so keep, again, back here on the grip, very, very light, and just keep moving your hand in a circle and let your hand do the work. Look at that. I don't know if, you, if it's too light for you to get in on. But it's not perfect, perfect, but you can go back through and kind of make your commitment lines a little darker. So that when I go through and dust with the eraser, get rid of the non-commitment lines. Right? Look at that. It's not a perfect circle, but it's pretty darn close, right? Pretty darn close. Okay. So, we also, they touch in the middle, so I want to get... So a cross, when you're doing a face, is really good for knowing where you're going to place the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, getting the proportions right on that. So I always like to do a light cross through the face, so I know where I'm putting in those details. We're going to do our little circle method. I'm going to come over these lines a little bit. I want to do that because you'll notice his center, if we want to put the pupil right there in the center, the eyes are going to go over it just a little bit. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that until I get ones that I like. and fix what I don't like. Okay. And I want to get, mm, let's see. Let's get rid of this. I don't want them like overlapping. Sorry, bud. I know it looks kind of scary probably right now. The magic of filling in the details later. There we go. This is a little long. Sometimes you just have to come through and fix it up. So, once we're done here, now I want to come in. His nose is going to be like right here. So, I'm just going to mark that. I'm going to say pupil here. Pupil here, and another smaller perfect circle, and another smaller perfect circle. Pupil not filled in makes them look a little, a little deranged. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna mark here, and we're gonna mark here. I did that by looking at where this 
here is on the reference close to that little circle so I put it in the same place on mine and now I'm going to look at the nose I made some commitment lines there so that is the nose whether we like it or not no, I could get in there and erase it if I needed to all right now This is his little dimple here. Dimples are the little dots in your cheek when you smile. Some people have them, some don't. That's one of those qualities you can inherit from your biological parent. I'm just going to make some more commitment lines on his dimple over here. And we got his smile. Now the cool thing about this Spongebob picture that I like, as far as difficulty goes, is that his mouth isn't open, so we're not drawing his tongue and that little dangly bit in the back of your throat, right? We just have to do these two twofers right here, which are just two rectangles coming off like, hey guys, what's up? They're not very far apart. There's, a, there's, a, there's for sure a gap, but they're not very, very far apart, so I want to make sure I'm adhering to that and then I can go in and put his uh, eyebrows on which look at these eyebrows those are couldn't be easier right those are just rectangles just real thin thin boy rectangles so I'm gonna just mark one they are spaced so you want to make sure you're spacing them two three look at our Spongebob coming to life he's not quite he kind of looks like the the episode where he's kind of drawn all Silly, you know, uh, he kind of looks like that version right now, and he will. All your characters will look a little silly until you fill in the details. Go ahead and fill in that one, and that one, that one. Uh -oh. I'll go ahead and just dust this in, and then I'm gonna do up here, dust this in, this is all the art classes I took in high school and all the time I spent drawing when I should have been doing something probably more productive with my time. Alright, I'm just going to make some of these more commitment-y. Let me just, this is bothering me, fix this up. Now, I want to stay light on the dimples. You would think you'd want to really, really fill that in. But if you look at the reference picture, you see those twinkles? I'm going to show you how to get that effect when you're doing it, uh, drawing the pupil of the eye. I think I said dimple, but I meant pupil. When you're drawing the pupil, I'll, uh, I'm going to come back to it when we're filling in our finer details but there's a way to get that sparkle. So keep it light still. Don't give too much commitment with the pupil. All right. So now I want to come in. Oh, wait, not quite done. Let me finish out his face here. Let me give him, he has this little red squiggle for his chin. I kind of come, it's like a, like a, like a wave almost. And the rise of it, the crest of it, is right between his teeth. So that's where I put mine. Oops, actually, I tilted my paper. Put the line there so I have it for a reference. There we go, right there. And there. Boy, with the reference line through it, it looks like he has left in his chin. There we go. Ooh, add a little bit of the curving to it. Now that we've got, got it placed. Okay. Now his tie. So his tie is going to be, again, using sort of what we have here now as a reference. His tie is going to be right where the gap in his teeth are is going to be the center of the tie. So I'm going to go ahead and draw 
a reference line. We like a reference line. So I know that my tie kind of comes down like this here. I want to don't want to bring it all the way down to here because part of the tie needs to go over the short. So the knot of the tie is right here. So I'm just going to and I'm doing the knot first so I have reference when I do the collar part. So we have the knot of his tie. I'm going to just firm up the bottom here. And now I'm going to come out. Looks like two. Oh, I didn't make this. That's okay. I can move it. There we go. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to come just over his pants. That actually might be too long. So you can, again, when you don't, when you just dust with the pencil and you don't commit to that line, you can always go back and fix your mistake. Let's do it. Okay, let's see what I'm doing here. Gonna be off just a little bit. That's okay. I'll fix it in a second. Aha! I see now. Okay, so you see you have this kind of like a diamond situation, and I see the mistake I made. This part needs to kind of curve. So I can just, again, lightly dusted, no commitment. His tie does not go over his pants, so I need to shorten it a little bit. Again, it's going to be, if it were perfect, it would be factory made by a computer, right? There's going to be a little bit of human error there. But, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Not mad at it. Get it a little shadow later for the little crease in the tie. Alright. So now what I want to do, oh no wait, i got to finish the collar. I'm going to come here. These are little triangles. I'll come here and pull it back to here. Little triangle. Pull it here. Try to use this as a reference. Pull it back to here. There we go. Little commitment lines there because we do want this to be square because his pants are square. He is the SpongeBob square pants. So, making sure that his pants stay in that nice square shape that we have here. Really more of a rectangle. He should be SpongeBob rectangle pants. Doesn't flow off the tongue as nicely. Now I'm going to start to add his little wavy sponge details. So I'm just kind of... This I'm not necessarily using the picture as a reference. No, I'm just kind of letting it just be bumpy. Just kind of making the decision for myself. I know at the top here I need it to curve, right? So I'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so uh, let me give him some more here. Yeah. Alright, looks good there. So now we're going to do the top. And again, these lines can be a little bit darker because this is the shape that we want SpongeBob to be. We want him to be really, really spongy. Right, if we're gonna, if we're gonna have SpongeBob. We want him to be spongy. There's no, no point in a non-spongy SpongeBob. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just saying silly things now. 
All right, top's done. Now we're gonna come here on the side. You know, you think about it, humans have been drawing to express themselves since we were thinking, right? Like, you have, they call them cave paintings, but really they're drawings where they, they looked at the animals around them and they, as best as they could, you know, that's why they're very um, crude is the word, meaning simple. Uh, I don't like his bumps as much on this side. I did that a little fast. Let me go back. Kind of bump them out there. That's a little better. And now I got to do the bottom. We're just going to go over the pants a little bit. Which I feel that. My, my belly goes over my pants a little bit too, SpongeBob. Well, I guess it's the shirt. All right. So we're not quite done. We haven't filled in all the little details, but look at that. That's already starting to look pretty good, right? So now we can start to like close out our commitments on the eyes here. Here, always look at your picture to see what's in front of what. His nose is in front of the eyeball, but I need to move that over a little, like a touch. Don't like that. That's a little better. I can fix that. So I'm shaping it out and then filling in details as I go. And making, you know, when I see something now that I like and I'm like, hey, that's the that's the vibe, I can make my commitment lines. My, ooh, that was a very commitment line. There. I'm gonna bring in here. This nice smile. I like that about SpongeBob. I like that he is always smiling. I would like to be like that. I try to be like that. So I think to myself. What would SpongeBob do? All right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and commit to these arm sleeves because there's really no details on those. We can commit. Now let's work on the arms. Now you might notice I've started not on the line that I've made. No, because that's my middle line to show where I want my middle to be. Actually. I'm going to commit to that. I'm going to make it the other side. I actually don't want that to be the middle because otherwise, but now his arm is too far away. I do want that to be the middle. I'm going to come in a little closer. A little, sorry, I put my hand in the way. A little closer. All right, I can erase that line in the middle. Do the hand, he has a little bump here. Ooh, fingers, fingers are always the hardest part. All right. I mean, I like to start on the fingers on the outside and kind of map them out, see where I want things to begin and end, and then kind of play with the the ones that are in the middle. Cause see how she can get it on the thing, the hand here. I'll zoom in on it. His fingers aren't all spaced the same way. So you just have to be, so like these two are kind of connected whereas there's a little space between those two and the thumb. So I'm gonna be paying attention to that. I want these, when I'm doing that here, I'm actually gonna start my line from here and then bring it in. Again, I'm not the best at drawing hands. <laughs> they are the hardest. Ask anyone who draws. 
say hands, what to do? We'll say hands and feet. here and because we spaced everything out with shapes first that kind of worked out I can make this stuff a little bigger I think all right I'm gonna get rid of this one in the middle it doesn't have a random vein running down his arm and now we can work on this one. All right. No, that's the white of the background, so it is far away from this body. Okay. Paying attention to where the arm is in relation to the body as well when you're putting down your, excuse me, rough sketch is important. He's got these really skinny arms. I didn't make this. I want to make these hands the same size as the other one. That's the other thing. When you lay down that sketch rule thin, when you get Satis you know, on one side, I was satisfied with that hand, but it did make this one a little bit small. So I have to like re go back and just re put in some basic shapes, and that's okay because accidents happen, right? You know, you go back, you fix it, you you you, you live, you learn, you get loves, as they say in the commercial. I'm being a little bit reckless here. I'm kind of going in without a plan, but I think it'll be okay. Again, hands and fingers are the hardest to draw. And my fingers are covered in my green hair dye. <laughs> It's not exactly because I didn't leave myself. Nah, it doesn't look right. I gotta fix it. It's gonna bother me. Okay. This is why you should map things out. and fingers, feet and toes. Hardest to draw. And it takes practice. I used to, when I was in high school, I had a sketchbook where I just practiced drawing certain parts uh, of the body. You know, like a head or ears, eyes. Like, that's that's what I, what I did to kind of, so that when I would get to these places when, when I'm filling in details, I have a little bit of a frame of reference for what I'm doing. A little bit trickier doing that with cartoons because they don't always follow the same proportions. Proportions. That was the word I was looking for before. <laughs> they don't always follow the same proportions as, as realistic, you know, humans. That's why they're cartoons. Um, or realistic animals, if they're being based on animals, or whatever the case may be there. But, um... Yeah, fingers, feet, toes... Super hard to draw. There we go. I think I got it. I'm okay with that. For our, the purposes of what we're doing, I'm okay with that. All right. Now, finally, 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 we are at the legs. 
So just like we did with the arms, we're using that line as more of a, a reference point. And we can erase it once we're in the middle here. And then if you see here the stem of his leg where his sock ends and his shoe begins is kind of a curved uh, angle kind of like that. So that's how I'm going to cap his legs here on that curved uh, thing. And then I'm going to do I think a circle around it for that base of his shoe. Take that line out. So since I did the circle over where his leg was and then I erased the line, now it's giving that illusion that this leg is in that circle because we did that curved part here. That's why you do that. And then I'm going to come up here and just add, oh, I'm going to, I ran out of space on the paper. Let's see if I can bring it in a little bit. Sometimes that'll happen. You'll run out of space on your on your paper, and that's that's okay. I'm just saying, my art is too big for this for this world. All right, so we got this shoe here, and I'm gonna leave a little circle here for the little uh, the light shining off. That's what that is there. I'm going to uh, put the socks in there. Line there. Okay. I'm going to do this leg. I think I'm going to deviate from the picture just slightly and make him stand a little sassy. It's a little bit of a bend in his leg. I'm going to curve it up here. Ooh, very curvy. I'm going to redo that shoe one. Because I don't like the proportions. Get rid of the line here. Ooh, that air conditioning just kicked on. Feels good. <laughs> All right. So now, oops. All right, cool. I'm gonna do like I did over here. I'm gonna create a circle around his leg. I like it on this side. And then I'm gonna erase the lines that went through so it gives that illusion. And this shoe has a the bump, but then it bumps up again for another big circle. And it comes up here where the heel is. And a little square for the heel. Need to make a smidge for this out. Make that come up a little bit more. Make this dip a little bit more. Commitment lines, commitment lines. All right, and then your little shiny right there. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and. The shoes are black, so I'm just going to fill it in. We're just doing a little rough sketch here. If you wanted to leave it, color it in a little bit later, add a little bit more detail, you could always do that. But for our purposes today, we're just doing a little, little, pencil, little pencil sketch. Fill it in. Fill it in. There we go. All right.
right, so we got the shoes, we got the hands, we got our details. Let's see. We can, I actually, I look pretty committed to this, but I'm going to actually make these a little bit bigger. Get this out a little bit more. And I'm going to give him his little freckles in there. Little freckles in here. Got to give him his other belt loopies. Just gonna recommit to this. And as I go, I make things a little bit darker. Over the line a little bit. I'm gonna fill these in, commit to these a little bit more. Now what I'm gonna do with this tie is I'm gonna keep this line a little bit light. And that's going to give the illusion like there's a little crease in there. Um, just, it is red, but I'm just going to dust it in a little bit. And then these are black, so I am going to go very commitment heavy here. Fill these in. Man, he's really coming to life, isn't he? It's always fun for me anyway. I, what I like about when I'm when I'm drawing or painting something is watching it go from shapes and sticks and little things here and there, little markers to oh wow, that's the that's the character I know and love. That's who I'm who I'm trying to replicate here on this piece of paper or on this canvas or wherever I happen to be creating that day. Okay, so then, oh, I want to come in and do the shine little twinkle in his eye, right? So, we have our pupil dot, right? We, don't, we want to erase it, but you almost want to leave a little dusting of where it was because you're going to use it as a reference. Because what you're going to do is you're going to make a circle. But don't commit to that circle entirely. You're not going to connect it. You're going to leave a little space open. And then you're going to do another little circle inside. It looks a little crazy right now. But when you put in the, the details, it helps. And then also, it looks like he has another one. Just, actually, I think I made it too low. I think that's the problem. Here, and I want to go here, and then one down here. All right. Sorry, I know my head's there. I'm focused. All right, and then I'm going to fill this in. Oh, that still isn't what I want it to look like. Hang on. Sorry, you're being very patient. Right. So that one's kind of a big twinkle. Right more at the top, and this one, more of a little twinkle. So it's right here at the bottom. And now I'm gonna fill this in. That looks a lot better. And then we're going to do this one. Same process. Notice, though, the difference in the size of the twinkle. The twinkle in the reference photo at the top of the pupil is much bigger. I have to redo this eye entirely now. Here. 
Boy, this one's going to be as long as the shoe painting one, huh? That's because art takes time. Pupils, but we want to leave the little sparkle there. Pupil, but leave the sparkle. Fill in the pupil, but leave the sparkle. All right. If I was doing this for like a painting or something, I might get a little bit pickier. All right. So yes. I have to come back here, commit to these leg lines, and he's only got a sock on one leg. We got to fix that. Look here. You don't want the lines for the socks to match up exact, exact, because nobody's sock lines, as they walk in a wear and tear, right, match up exactly, exactly. But. Now it's okay that this left shoe is a little bit smaller than this right shoe because what that's doing is creating a little bit of what we call depth of field. And what I mean by depth of field is that it's giving the illusion that it's just a little bit further away than this other shoe. This shoe is coming a little bit closer. That's what we mean when we're saying depth of field. All right. All right. He's looking good. I think the only thing we're missing are his little sponge spots. So he's got two in the corner here. So I'm just gonna lightly do this and lightly do this. One's a little, the one on the bottom is a little bit bigger. If we were coloring this in, you would want to leave these. You wouldn't want to color over these in yellow because you'd want to color them in in like a, like a like a grassy green because that's what the inside of his spots look like. They look like this grassy green, which is giving it this sort of shadowy effect, which is why it looks like sponge spots. When you're coloring, and we're not doing that here, when you're coloring, you use something called color theory. And you use the color wheel to pick your colors. You never use like a flat black. You want to use the opposite color and sort of mix it. And that's how you create shadows and stuff like that and you can do highlights and low lights kind of gives it a little bit more character pun intended all right and give some commitment lines here again now when you when you oop it sometimes that will happen and that's okay Then you, when you get them, you know, your, your, your sketch where you like it, you can go back through, darken up those lines, really commit, say, hey, this is the proportion, and this is what I, the shape that I'm, I'm, I like for this, and, uh, and then present it to your friends and say, hey, I'm an artist. Actually, there is one more thing you must do. all the greats do and that is sign your name at the bottom and that so that everyone knows who did it ta-da thank you for watching this adventurous kids episode what did you learn today adventurous kids adventurous kids what was the most interesting fact? Adventurous kids. Adventurous kids. Adventurous, Adventurous kids. kids.